It's been over four months since the Ship 24 and Booster 7 mishap, and SpaceX is now approaching the final critical phase of its launch campaign for the next massive Starship vehicle. But this time, everything is guaranteed to get much more exciting. The main star, Booster 9, completed its pre-flight testing last month. This monster now only leaves the mount under its own power as SpaceX had removed all alignment pins from the top of the orbital launch mount. However, it won't be launching on this journey alone. Joining it will be Ship 25, which has just reached the launch site last night. And at the time of this report, Ship 25 was on its taxi rollout. Based on the time it takes to lift Booster 9, which is honestly pretty fast, stacking could be performed and completed in about 12 hours. This isn't their first rendezvous, but it does mark a significant milestone as it's the inaugural occasion where Starship incorporates a hot stage ring section between them. This vital six foot high ring serves as an extension to adapt the booster for upper stage hot staging, equipped with specialized openings designed to vent exhaust from the six engines beneath the ship while the ship remains securely attached to the booster. Fingers are crossed that the stacking of Ship 25 proceeds without any hiccups during this crucial phase. And once the stacking has been performed, SpaceX's potential path of testing should be a wet dress rehearsal next. The prototypes will be simultaneously loaded with around 5,000 tons or around 11 million pounds of liquid oxygen and methane propellant, and then will run through a launch countdown, diverging just before ignition and liftoff. Other than the fact that it diverges before ignition and liftoff, a WDR or wet dress rehearsal is meant to be more or less identical to a launch attempt. And if the wet dress rehearsal goes according to plan, SpaceX will then attempt to simultaneously ignite all 33 of the Raptor engines installed on Super Heavy B-7, almost certainly making it the most powerful liquid rocket ever tested. Even if all 33 engines never reach more than 60% of their maximum thrust of 230 tons, or around 510,000 pound force, they'll likely break the Soviet N-1 rocket's record of 4,500 tons of thrust, or around 10 million pound force at sea level. It'd also be the most rocket engines ever simultaneously ignited on one vehicle. SpaceX will be pushing the envelope by several measures and success is far from guaranteed. In fact, it's unclear if SpaceX will immediately attempt a full wet dress rehearsal or a 33-engine static fire. At a minimum, assuming WDR testing is completed without major issues, SpaceX will likely attempt at least one or more interim static fires, with fewer than 33 engines before attempting the first full test. If both milestones, which involve a full wet dress rehearsal and 33 engine static fire, are completed without significant issues, there is a chance that SpaceX could move directly into preparations for Starship's second orbital launch attempt without unstacking the rocket. SpaceX might perform both tests, one of them, or none at all, none at all, depending on needs and requirements set by itself. As of now, SpaceX still needs to communicate the possibilities. In the likelier scenario that some issues arise and some repairs are required, the path will be more circuitous, but should still end in an orbital launch attempt late this year. During its next orbital test flight, the colossal booster needs to separate about three minutes after liftoff and drop in the Gulf of Mexico. It should then fly in space around Earth at an altitude of more than 150 miles before splashing down off the whole Hawaiian coast. The whole journey should last about one and a half hours if it goes as planned. This will be a crucial demonstration of hardware that NASA is depending on to get humans back to the moon onto the lunar surface in the next few years. And if successful, it'll mean Musk is one small step closer to realizing his personal dream of building a city on Mars. Billionaire business magnate Musk has oversold timelines in the past, but this has been what we know about when SpaceX will try this daunting feat again. So stay tuned. And another bit of interesting news, blazing like a shooting star as it streaked through the northern Florida skies, a SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft carried four space station flyers back to Earth early Monday, splashing down in the Atlantic Ocean east of Jacksonville to wrap up a six-month stay in orbit. Crew 6 Commander Stephen Bowen, Pilot Woody Hoberg, Cosmonaut Andre Fadjiev, and UAE Crewmate Sultan Aniadi undocked from the station's forward 
Chord Harmony module at 7.05 a.m. EDT Sunday to kick off a 17-hour flight back to Earth. The automated crew Dragon executed a 16-minute deorbit thruster firing starting at 11.24 p.m., slowing the spacecraft by about 250 miles per hour. Just enough to drop it back into the lower atmosphere for a steep southwest to northeast trajectory, carrying it above Central America and Northern Florida. After initial medical checks aboard the recovery ship, all four flyers were to be flown to shore by helicopter. A NASA jet was standing by in Jacksonville to carry them back to Houston and the Johnson Space Center for debriefing, more detailed medical checks, and reunions with friends and family. Left behind in orbit were three Soyuz crew members, Station Commander Sergei Prokopiev, Dmitry Petalin, and NASA astronaut Frank Rubio, and four Crew Dragon flyers launched August 26th to replace Bowen and company. Crew 7 Commander Jasmine Mokbelli, European Space Agency astronaut Andreas Mogesen, Japanese astronaut Satoshi Furukawa, and cosmonaut Konstantin Borisov. Prokopia, Petalin, and Rubio were launched to the station last September and are wrapping up a marathon mission of 371 days in orbit. Launched atop a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket on March 2nd, the Crew 6 flyers spent 185 days and 22 hours off planet, circling the globe 2,000. 1,976 times while traveling 78.9 million miles through space. Upon splashdown, Bowen, the only space veteran on the crew, had logged 227 days in space across four missions. Over the course of their flight, the crew's six astronauts welcomed seven visiting vehicles, including two unpiloted Cargo Dragon spacecraft, two Russian Progress supply ships, a Northrop Grumman Cygnus cargo carrier, and two piloted Crew Dragons. They also carried out three spacewalks. Bowen and Hoberg ventured outside twice to install new roll-out solar blankets, and Al Nayeti joined Bowen for a third excursion to retrieve a failed antenna package and to carry out other maintenance. It's certainly been the experience of a lifetime and a real honor to get to spend six months, six incredibly short-feeling months, living and working aboard this incredible orbiting outpost, Hoberg said before departing the station. I think we got a lot done. And this is all thanks to the SpaceX and NASA teams. And for our last bit of news in another part of the space field, the European Space Agency plans to set a target launch period for the first Ariane 6 in October, with the hopes that the vehicle can finally take flight not too late into 2024. At a September 4th briefing, officials from ESA or ESA and other partners on the Ariane 6 said they should be able to announce a range of dates for the rocket's inaugural launch after a pair of static fire tests of the rocket's core stage and its Vulcan 2.1 engine on the launch pad in Kourou, French Guiana. The first of those tests, slated to last about four seconds, is scheduled for September 5th. That'll be followed by a 472nd test on October 3rd that, if successful, will provide what ESA calls flight-ready qualification for the core stage. Those tests, said ESA Director General Joseph Oshbacher, should allow the agency to set a target for the first launch, which ESA acknowledged last month had slipped to 2024. We will then be in a position to define a launch period for Ariane 6, which we will announce to you after these series of tests have been conducted. Oshbacher declined to speculate when asked if that first launch will take place in the first half of 2024, if those tests go as planned. We are on a good track. We have stabilized the schedule. The tests are looking really good, he said. I think the chances, if everything goes perfectly are pretty good that it's not too late last year, but there are still a lot of unknowns ahead of us. Those tests have not always gone perfectly. The four-second static fire test that was originally scheduled for July was scrubbed for technical issues as well as a lack of liquid oxygen as the countdown was delayed. That test was rescheduled for August 29th, but again postponed after what ESA described as a technical issue affecting the control bench that handles propellant loading and the automated countdown. And that's all for this exciting jam-packed episode of great spacex thank you so much folks and if you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below we appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration as always this is kevin from great spacex and until next time i'm not an ai keep looking up <laughs> <laughs>